everybody, thank you very much for watching another video from FreeFX. So today I'm going to talk about is it possible to make money trading Forex? And I think it is possible to make money trading Forex, you just have to be absolutely precise about what you want to do with that idea. So let's talk about that. First of all, I'm going to show you a couple of things. My channel, and that's really because I think some of you might not have sort of seen it, so here's my channel. I made quite a few videos and it's really about time I should try to tell people to sort of think about what um, what I'm trying to achieve here which is to kind of share my journey and that's really about how I came to do Forex and so number one I started doing Forex in 2012 and uh, it's been eight years pretty much almost to the day and I had a lot of successes a lot of failures and it's always been with like small accounts in terms of live money and demo trading usually with larger accounts than I've done live trading with. So, uh, but interesting developments from July of last year. I actually had a really good run. I started a new account first of July of last year and decided really um, I wanted to have a, a year of profitable training and really nurture my demo account to try and prove to myself that I could do at least one year without messing up, without over leveraging, without bad habits, etc. etc. So anyway, at the end of the um, actually May of this year, so less than a year, I actually got uh, to 100% profit. Uh, now this graph here is actually the same account. So I continued trading it. I got to double, started with 50k, got to 100k and decided, well, it's not enough to just do 100%. So I started off thinking I might get 20%, 10%, you know, for the year. And then it just got to 50% and then from there it just went on and on and basically all I did was to just be careful with my losses and try to uh, trend trade uh, as much as possible and uh, not risk too much every day. So if I had some good trades, try not to push it too much, even if the, the trend kept sort of running. I traded mostly EURUSD. Um, I actually really didn't want to uh, trade EURUSD uh, for quite some time because um, I thought it was very sort of non um, smart thing to do because it's very kind of slow, etc. But um, combination of things, uh, experience, etc., taught me that actually it is quite cheap and affordable um, if you do sort of day trading. And I don't mean like scalping, I mean, you know, putting one trade per day or one trade or even keeping a trade on open for two or three days um, but essentially I tend to trade intraday so and that's really uh, helped my account growing because it's cheaper and the leverage is not crazy the margin requirements are quite small so essentially my journey has been uh, of cumulative profits so my account is today I finished uh, at 246 returns I'll just repeat that 246% returns so I started with 50k and I'm just over 173,000 uh, pounds it's a simulated account I repeat it it's not real money but the point is that I've actually done a year profitable and then I didn't just blow that out the next month I continued from May uh, till now and I intend to continue so my target at the moment is just to continue I might get to 300% and then after that, who knows? But the point is, this is a, a real account in my mind because it's, yes, a demo, but essentially it doesn't really make that much of a difference. So uh, just to say that it's not really important that it's real or fake money. There's obviously some people will say, well, with um, a demo account, the slippage is not there, this and that. But with something as liquid as your USD, you know, um, it's fairly well buffered. In terms of that there's always a lot of liquidity during the main trading hours um, yes if you trade it through the night um, during the Asian session maybe not but essentially during the European and North American hours there's a lot of um, liquidity so you know it's not like to drop like 20% um, in a second yes these things can happen um, and you've got to be prepared but essentially um, it's unlikely that on a day-to-day -day basis you'll experience that like if you're trading something like the Turkish Lira, which I've done a lot of uh, for more than two years, um, and essentially it is a kind of market where 
you'll get those moves. So um, let's go back to the idea of making money in Forex. So that's been my journey essentially um, to go through eight years of trials and tribulations and errors and trying all sorts of things under the sun. And finally, I had a, a profitable year on demo. And then what happened was that my family, um, they've been sort of following my trials and tribulations with this uh, for a while. And they said, well, actually, maybe um, if we gave you some capital, we'd trade it for us. And it was really small capital but essentially I traded it from uh, May so when this happened uh, for three months and I made a hundred percent on that and that was incredible the feeling of doing that for somebody um, because I didn't profit from that I didn't actually earn anything um, I put in a bit of time for them but um, I basically returned their money doubled um, so this obviously was a great thing personally, but um, it made me think about the question, which is, is it possible to make money uh, trading Forex? And there's not really like a magic money tree in anything in life. It's like any other business, except you're actually trading money for money, as opposed to you know trading your skills uh, as a carpenter or your skills as a musician, uh, your skills as whatever for money. So. And it's also not very people based. Um, so you're not trading in a pit with other traders, you're trading from home and in front of a screen. So you're not talking to other people, you're not actually selling products and customers get in touch with you for feedback and stuff like that. And uh, you're not fitting a dress on somebody. You know, it's not that kind of business, but it's still a business um, with profits and losses. So essentially, if you make a profit, uh, the thing is, um, yes, most people want to know that you're not crazy with their money, but you could, in theory, um, make that your job. Uh, so not just trade your own money, but trade other people's money. Now that's a different route altogether. Uh, is it possible to do it with uh, Forex to make money? Yes, it is, because at the end of the day, Forex, in spite of its name, uh, currencies are used for uh, actual, you know, investment. So it's not just something that uh, crazy people do with crazy leverage. Um, if you can't leverage in the same way as in Forex in other kind of financials, then that's true. Forex gives you more freedom to do that. But obviously that's the double-edged sword, so you have to be careful. Um, at the end of the day, uh, the leverage is an attractive thing about Forex. Um, so you can start with a sli slight smaller account, but obviously, um, it's going to take you a lot of time to do it sensibly and eventually you'll get frustrated and start leveraging up because you want to shorten that journey. So um, unfortunately that's the conundrum that Forex attracts people with smaller capital um, because of the leverage that it affords. But actually recently there's been a clamp down on that. So the Financial Conduct uh, Authority in the UK uh, a couple of years ago said enough is enough and we're going to clamp down. So maximum now is uh, brokers can't offer clients accounts with more than 20 to 30 um, percent leverage so um, 30 time leverage so that means that you know the 100 to 100 percent uh, 200 to 1 leverage is not really there anymore um, so you know even that but you know 20 time leverage is pretty quite a lot yeah so if you think like 10 pounds 20 time leverage is 200 100 you know is 2000 and if you put a thousand pounds that's 20,000 yeah. so I mean that's quite a lot and uh, that you can do with that money with 20 time leverage for example so um, that side of Forex is good if you use it sensibly and um, because you can't go like 200 time leverage anymore um, it's a bit safer but obviously there'll be people out there who it's gonna just ignore that and sell you some crazy amounts of leverage so avoid um, but essentially making money with Forex is hard work and yes the leverage helps you kind of actually making money that you can do something with because if you spend a whole year trading and you make 10 pounds or dollars it's not really worth your time uh, maybe at the beginning because you've got to learn and so you can't expect a lot of returns but when you start putting hours and hours and I put thousands of hours really I have um, not actually putting trades on, but also, you know, uh, journaling, uh, watching hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of videos, 
um, from analysts um, looking at the markets and really try and understand um, not just the technicalities of, of trading but um, actually kind of how to analyze uh, markets and understanding risk trends, understanding correlation, understanding um, different types of currencies and how to create complex charts with um, overlays, different things that correlate, um, how to look at correlation between things and diversification and that. So not just the, the basics, not trying to sort of really learn all your candlestick uh, chart patterns. That's kind of the beginning. It's all very interesting, fascinating. Once you get beyond the sort of the first stage, which is the kind of the sponge stage where we want to learn everything, you need to start. That's the hardest thing to stop learning and then start practicing and getting good at something. And getting good at something is actually um, sticking to one thing. That's the hardest thing to do because you always hear that something better has come along or is easier. Somebody makes you look easy. The people that make you look easy that actually don't trade are the worst because they are selling your dream. Um, you actually know the people who are making it work for themselves either don't go on youtube make kind of videos like this <laughs> or uh, basically um you know who are doing it for a living they don't need to advertise on youtube frankly um so or are people who generally have um done something with it and want to share um and yes they're making it look easy not because they're trying because it's easy for them because they've been through a lot of time and 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 pain as well and eventually got good at something while it's trading a particular aspect of the market always think that the edge is a, a very subtle thing edge your edge and also circumstantial edge right so you might be good at something because of your skills having got to a point where you're actually good at something um but as a circumstantial um environment so basically your skills at a particular point doing something are not really sought after or they don't really provide you many opportunities and then there's a point in time where your skills and the available opportunities kind of match and so that's the best moment where you feel that you're almost invincible um because the environment supports the, your approach and your skills etc but essentially that is something that you need to work towards and it can take time it can take months and years your perspective is always your own so my own perspective is because of the time it's taken me to doing doing this part-time essentially because i i had to do other things in life um so it was always in scraps of time so i'm making this video quite late in the evening um uh, it's a long day as somebody who's got family and that so um it's very busy there's been lockdown and everything so um so even doing these videos is an investment in my own time uh to share but it's not something I get a return out of. Um, but essentially, um, with doing it part time, it takes much longer. So it's taken me basically um, seven years and a bit, and kind of eight years now. Um, and the last year, as I said, it was fairly profitable. And then when I did this kind of small um, trading of family funds, and that's gone really well. So making money for X is possible. It's like any other thing. Um, if you stick to it and develop a, a way of managing risk you can call it strategy a system you can call it whatever you want at the end of the day if it works um, there are obviously things that you need to be able to do um, defining how you manage risk is very hard uh, because it's not just about numbers it's about um, the skill of managing situations so it's situational as much as um, computational so if you don't do like quantitative, if you don't do um, that kind of trading, if you're trading manually, so you look at say um, levels um, in a particular um, instrument or asset class, um, you kind of need to really um, know those levels really well. And then have, yes, you know, depending on what system you have, maybe your platform has some kind of, um, you know trigger or alert system where if price hits a certain level it tells you so then you can go and have a look and see if it's time to buy or sell or how you're going to position yourself and stuff like that so you don't have to be attached to the charts the whole time um if you have a really basic package that has nothing at all um then you have to spend a bit more time in front of the screen um then just get familiar with say one currency pair and know the levels really well everybody's brain is different right some people can manage a lot of things 
really quickly. Um, I found that when I try to trade too many things, it gets really confusing. Um, I had to start taking notes of everything and it just becomes a huge operation. And when, you know, trading is something you're just starting to learn and you don't get paid for all that time, um, it's great at the beginning, but then it gets really time intensive. So you have to think about making money is also saving time because your time becomes more precious as you get older, especially because you have possibly potentially you've got other responsibilities. So when you start something new, that's not kind of part of life. Then you have to think about um, how to compensate for time taken away from other things, which actually get either paid for or you get kind of a personal satisfaction with like sharing time with somebody you love or friends. So if you're taking time away from friends and family to do something that A, you don't get paid for and B, is not really a hobby in a sense that you share with other people, then it's quite a selfish thing to do and you have to kind of really think about how you're going to uh, engineer that time not to uh, take over your life because it's it's a balance between what it gives you and what it takes away so you have to make your time efficient as well um, so the less time you spend in front of the charts uh, the better it is um, it's making money in the sense that it's taking less time away from other things so I'll finish there by saying that there are lots of videos online uh, and the search can you make money in Forex is actually really um, um, I actually had this ready earlier. Yeah. There's something like 2 million um, results, I believe, for this. But I actually just went straight to YouTube. There are lots of videos. Um, some are quite kind of funky, like by Heza. Um, it's got like 2 million views. Tried Forex day trading for a week, etc. Um, personally, I actually don't know how to make videos like this with those kind of, um, those green, the sort of green thing on thumbnails and YouTube seems to be everywhere. And, uh, so I'm sorry if this is quite drab. I just haven't got the time or technology to be doing these kind of really funky edits. Um, so just me for my face and today a cardigan. So, uh, but essentially it's just to say that I don't really have uh, 2 million views on any of my videos and that's because it's not meant to kind of shock or reveal any kind of home truths about you know the truth about trading or I made a million pounds in a day stuff like that it's actually really uh, quite boring the whole thing about um, making money um, see these videos with like the the cash and that it just all this one you know with the cars and everything just stay away I mean some people generally have money and um, buy, uh, you know, nice things for themselves. That's great. But when you go out and sell that on, on YouTube like that, I think it's really a case of why. Because, you know, if, if you are just a professional, you know, um, it's not really that exciting to be like a professional accountant or money manager it's not the rock and roll at all um you know there's the wolf of wall street kind of aspect uh but actually um there are very few people that have that kind of money um from chili forex from home um so you have to think about really carefully about that and also you know people who make it that big they don't go on television um they might do some interviews here and there but they don't go and set up a YouTube channel. A, they haven't got time. Uh, B, they don't do funky edits because they haven't got time. And C, uh, their time is valuable and it goes back into the business. So, you know, they're managing, uh, if you've got a hedge fund to run, you're not sitting in front of YouTube and making videos. So stay away, <laughs> really stay away and watch them because they're entertaining. Absolutely, some of them are fantastic, but they're not really the reality. Um, so if somebody asks you, are you trading? If you're actually a trader, you probably not say that because people think Wolf of Wall Street. Um, so as far as I know from all the interviews I listened to, um, the few people I contacted who are money managers or etc., they don't go around uh, saying, oh, I'm a trader, it's amazing. Uh, sorry if I infantilize this, but essentially it's really frustrating to see sometimes 
there are actually people out there uh, trying to help and there's one who's actually on my channel and that's Scruffy Trader. Uh, I'll just bring it up because um, I think he's one of those people who consistently is you can see his videos are not that funky either, like mine. Um, sorry, Scruffy. But it's true that um, he's really just himself. And he's trying to make... Um, he's trying to make it absolutely obvious that trading Forex is not about flash cars. And it's, about, it's not about 16 screens on the wall and great lighting. It's about being yourself and being true to what you're trying to do, which is to make money end of so you know it's not really about impressing others it's about um, managing risk and not losing money because if you're doing it for a living truly you don't care what people think as long as you're managing risk um, if you're making enough to sustain yourself you know if, there's, if there isn't a, a huge house to show for that but you're paying your bills it doesn't matter it's a job like any other and and when you've got a job uh, you don't want to lose it or because of something stupid um, you just put your head down and try and do it and stay in the job. And who pays your wages in Forex? Nobody except yourself. So if you do something stupid uh, and do some flash trade where you burn all your money, uh, that's your job gone. So it's pretty serious. Um, and uh, too many distractions are not particularly good for uh, um, doing trading. So at the end of all that, uh, love these sort of funky videos and stuff and uh you know they're pretty honest some of them but um i do wonder why uh there are so many views as well um because i think generally people search for easy answers and videos with big titles saying uh how to trade as a complete beginner etc etc attract a lot of views um but for quality content I think you need to go to something like um, Daily FX. And if you find videos by John Kicklider, and I'll be listening to his stuff for a long, long time. John Kicklider is the chief strategist for, um, uh, chief currency strategist for um, Daily FX. And essentially he's been uh, uh, on the go for a while. If you know Kathy Lien, L-I-E-N, she was the uh, chief strategist before him a few years ago. Um, and she's gone on to write books um, and become a real um, household name for Forex trading and has been employed by um, a fund etc and he's uh, stayed with um, um, Daily FX which was the research arm of FXCM and now it's uh, IG because it's been sold by FXCM but he's, his style is just his own he's been doing this for years um, every day pretty much, even in lockdown, he's been making videos. Um, he's absolutely fantastic because he doesn't just talk about um, Forex. He talks about Forex and correlation between markets, um, risk sentiment. Um, um, so it gives you a grounding in um, understanding financials, not just from the Forex point of view. Um, as you can see, you know, this video had 463 views, not 4 million views. So it makes you wonder, doesn't it? Because these videos are actually really in-depth and they cover a lot of ground. And he makes some really interesting points um, using charting uh, software, looking at different correlations between asset classes. And um, it's a real grounding in economics and um, and then back to the trade. So it's actionable um, ideas and ways to look at things. Anyway, just to finish, it is possible to make money in Forex, um, but I think it's also possible to lose money in Forex. So um, that's the balance is risk and reward. So you really have to think about how much money you want to make and what you need to do to get yourself there. Um, don't buy into courses necessarily. Um, try to learn from free resources like this. Um, and really, um, if you want to look at videos on how to make money in Forex, fine. Uh, just make sure you watch the right ones because there are some people out there who just want to sell you um, courses and there's a lot of evidence that these courses don't work. Um, so Online Trading Academy, um, there's a lot of writing about that. So you go and look it up. It's one of those things where 
um, the Selly courses, but none of the people on the courses actually trade it successfully. Um, so, and also finally define success. So what is success? Is it making a million, two million? Is it making 100% profits? Whether that's, you know, 100% on $10 pounds to begin with. But think about your starting capital. So if being successful is having uh, something to show for for yourself that actually means something. So if you can make 200 pounds or dollars in your first year of profitable trading, and I, and I say profitable rather than just first year because it's quite hard to make money because it's such in the first year. But first profitable year, you make say 100, 200 pounds or dollars. Um, you can buy something with that. You know, you can buy something with that. If you make 10 pounds or dollars, you can buy something, but it's not going to feel very good. So think about what you're trying to achieve. If you want to have something at the end of it and buy something with that, then that will make you feel more real. And if it makes a real um, input into your life, then it's also easier to sell it to the people around you. Um, because if you have people around you that think you're doing something just as a hobby, um, they'll eventually want that time back for themselves from you so it's really good that you um say to them actually here's why i'm doing this is because i managed to get this with that and it makes it easy for other people to um kind of give you space to continue doing that because obviously it does have results and uh, it means that maybe you could buy a small holiday for your family um or make a contribution to buying a house and um, you know, however small or just start small, but basically small contributions to uh, real life. That's how uh, it becomes an acceptable part of, a, say, a family uh, routine rather than just something weird that you do. <laughs> so think about how you can make it work for yourself and all your family. So with that, I'm going to stop here. Thank you very much for watching. There's a lot of rambling, but um, it's quite late. I look very tired, but essentially that's because um it's just coming out of lockdown there's a lot of stuff going on so um long days but um it's been great and um i look forward to my next video with you take care and see you in my next vfx bye